Hey everyone, in this video I'm just going to go through some of the basics of trigonometry which you might have learned in grade 10 and introduce you to the concept of special angles. So in trigonometry you might remember that you studied triangles, so I'm going to draw up a triangle here. And one of the things that you guys talked about with triangles last year was you talked about the angles. So I'm going to pick an angle and I'm going to give it a name. So in this case we're calling that angle, angle theta, which is a common name. You might remember that there were some ratios uh, that related the angle in a triangle, or one of the angles in a triangle, to the side lengths. Uh, there was the sine, cosine, and tangent ratio. And the ratios could be memorized by the following. So, ka, toa. So means sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine means adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent means opposite over adjacent. Okay, so in order to take the sine, cosine, and tangent of an angle, uh, we obviously have to be able to identify the opposite side length, the adjacent side length, and the, uh, the hypotenuse. So the opposite side length to an angle is always going to be the side length, which is the furthest away from that angle. So in our triangle here, this is going to be our opposite side length. I'm just labeling with an O. Okay, the hypotenuse is also pretty easy to recognize because in any right triangle, the hypotenuse is going to be the longest side, but it's also going to be the side which is furthest from the right angle. So that's going to be this guy here, which I'm labeling H. And the adjacent side length is, the, is one of the side lengths that kind of creates the angle, but the one that's not the hypotenuse. Uh, and that's going to be this guy down here. Okay, so once you can identify opposite adjacent and hypotenuse, you could find the sine, cosine, and tangent of the angle by, uh, by using the ratios appropriately. So for example, finding the sine of theta is the opposite divided by the, pot divided by the hypotenuse length. Uh, the cosine of the angle theta is the adjacent side length divided by the hypotenuse. And the tangent is the opposite side length divided by the adjacent side length. Okay, so that's basic, basic uh, review of grade 10. So right now I want to talk to you guys a bit about these special triangles. So the special triangles, we're going to learn about two of them in this class. Um, so the first special triangle looks like this, all right? So it's going to be uh, a triangle with two equal sides. So you're going to notice that the two sides that are perpendicular to one another, they're going to be uh, they're going to be equal to one another. And we have a special name for a triangle that has two sides uh, that are equal to one another. It's an isosceles triangle. So this is an isosceles right angled triangle. Okay, that's our first special triangle. And what our goal is here is to come up with some side lengths and to come up with some angles. And that's going to actually allow us to find out the sine, cosine, and tangent of certain special angles quite easily, okay? So we're going to have to assign some values here. So here's how we're going to do this, all right? I'm going to show you guys how to come up with the values. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to pick some easy numbers to work with here. So for example, we're going to pick, how about the number 1, right? We're going to pick the number 1, and we're going to label this side with a length of 1. Okay, it's a nice easy number to work with. It's the smallest side in our triangle. Well, it's one of the small sides of our triangle because two of the sides are equal. Um, so labeling that as a length of one, right? Uh, now, since we know that there is another side which is the same length, that means that this guy is going to be uh, one as well. And the question is, well, what's that going to make our hypotenuse? Well, we know that any right triangle uh, has sides which are related by the Pythagorean theorem. So we're actually just going to calculate quickly what the hypotenuse is going to be. So using the Pythagorean theorem, I know that 1 squared plus 1 squared, that's my two sides there, squared and added together, gives me the length of my hypotenuse squared. Well, 1 squared and 1 squared gives me 2. So 2 is the hypotenuse squared. And if I take the square root of both sides, I get the square root of 2 is my hypotenuse. So I just label that there. Now, for the angles, right, again, you need to remember that this is an isosceles triangle. Now, for an isosceles triangle, uh, the two angles that uh, kind of lie next to the equal sides are actually going to be the, uh, the same angle. Okay, so the two missing angles here are going to be the same angle. That's these guys here. They're going to be the same angle. So we also need to remember that all the angles in a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. Uh, and we already have a 90 degree angle in there because, of course, it is a right angle triangle. So these two angles need to be the same angle. And we know that all three angles need to add up to 180. The only possibility is if these two angles are both 45 degree angles. Because if we do 45 degrees plus 45 degrees plus 90 degrees, that gives me a total of 180 degrees like we need. So this is our first special triangle. And this is going to be a triangle that I'm going to want you guys to memorize. Okay, We're going to be coming back to it several times over this unit. This is our first special triangle. Okay, Our se second special triangle I'm going to draw in here. So it's going to look kind of like this. Right, one side is going to be a bit. It's going to be a bit taller than it is kind of wide. Um, 
And the reason why, actually, is because this special triangle is essentially going to be <clears throat> sorry, half of an equilateral triangle. Right, so I'm going to draw in just kind of a couple other sides in a light blue color here. They're not going to be part of the triangle, but I'm just, just to show you that it is part of an equilateral triangle. Okay, so if I take that blue part and that gray part together, that gives me one big equilateral triangle. And remember, the equilateral triangle has side lengths, which are all the same. Okay, same length. Uh, and it also actually has angles, which are all the same. Okay, but again, we're really concerned with the right half of this equilateral triangle, so the one in gray. So again, I'm going to have to assign some lengths to this, uh, and I'm going to pick my smallest side length, and I like to give that an ACC number to work with, so I'm going to give that 1 again, so that's going to be 1. Now I want you to notice that that bottom smallest side length is actually half of the side length of the bottom of the equilateral triangle. Okay, so that means that this equilateral triangle would have side lengths equal to 2. And since, in this case, the hypotenuse uh, is going to be the side length of that equilateral triangle as well, that means that that side length is going to be 2 as well, okay? Now, the missing side length is going to be the, uh, the kind of vertical side length now, uh, and we're going to have to calculate that with the Pythagorean theorem as well. Now, of course, this time I have my, uh, uh, my hypotenuse, so it's, I'm going to have to sub this in a little bit differently. I'm going to have 1 squared plus b squared is equal to 2 squared, where b is the missing side length in this case. 1 squared is 1, so I have 1 plus b squared equals 4, right? And isolating for b, I get b is equal to the square root of 3. So that means that this missing side length is the square root of 3, okay? And I'm not going to give it as a decimal. I want to keep it as the square root of 3. I want to keep it as a radical, just like we did in the first special triangle, keeping it as the square root of 2, okay? Now for the angles. Well, you need to remember that uh, all the angles in an equilateral triangle are, uh, are equal to one another, and we know, of course, that they need to add up to 180 degrees. So if I have three angles that are equal to one another and they add up to 20 degrees, the only possibility is that uh, all the angles are 60 degrees. Now, the one angle that actually is in common with the equilateral triangle is going to be this one right here. Okay? And that means that that angle is a 60 degree angle. Okay? Again, we already know that we have a 90 degree angle in our triangle. So we have a 90 degree angle, we have a 60 degree angle. Uh, that means that the other angle that has to be left over is going to be 30 degrees. Okay, and that's going to be up here. So this is a 30 degree angle. Okay, so now that I have uh, my second uh, special triangle, again, I want you guys to, to think about this and try, try your best to memorize how we built this, okay, because we're going to be coming back to it. Now, what these special triangles actually help us do, are they, they, what they do is they help us come up with the sine, cosine, and tangent of these special angles, 45 degrees, 30 degrees, and 60 degrees, Okay, they help us come up with these um, in exact form. So you might remember last year, uh, last year in grade 10, you would take, say, the sine of 45 degrees, and you would get probably a decimal number, right? It would spit out a decimal number, and you'd round it. Well, we, we're trying our best to not round right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to express these things in exact form. So let me just give you a quick example. Let's say that we wanted to know the sine of 60 degrees. Well, here's what we would do. We would have to take a look at our special triangles, we would go to the special triangle that has a 60 degree angle in it. Well, that's right here, and that's the 60 degree angle. We know that the sine of any angle is the opposite side length divided by its hypotenuse. Okay, so first we identify the opposite side length, and that's right here. Then we identify the hypotenuse, and that's right here. Okay, so that means that the sine of 60 degrees is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, which is going to be, well, the opposite side length was root 3 over the hypotenuse, which is 2. So sine of 60 degrees is the square root of 3 divided by 2. So this is the exact form of the sine of 60 degrees. Okay? Again, if you type that into your calculator, you're going to get a decimal. This is uh, the sine of 60 degrees in exact form. Okay? And this is what we're going to be uh, using for a pretty good chunk of this unit. Okay? So remember your special triangles. Remember how to take sine, cosine, and tangent. And that will allow you to be able to find the sine and cosine and tangent of all these special angles. Okay, guys, so this has been Special Angles. Take care.